Hey, Kevin here, Skylabs, bringing you another video. This is gonna be a quick top five best accessories you can add to your vintage receiver or amplifier for just a little bit more enjoyment. Um, this is a fun list. A lot of the viewers uh, are just getting into this. So while some of these might seem obvious to you, we get customers that come in the door and are blown away when we tell them that these can be added to their receiver. So cool, I don't have a lot of announcements. Um, I think we can just get straight into the video. Let's do this. Oh, I almost forgot. We're gonna have some affiliate links in the description down below to these. However, make sure if you are in an area where you can purchase these things local, go purchase them local. These affiliate links, we barely make any money off of them. So if you can buy these local, do it. If not, use our links, uh, appreciate it. And coming in at number five on the list, and maybe the most obvious to some of you that have been in the vintage or the stereo game for a while, I wanted to bring up some things that you can plug into the switched outlet in the back of your vintage receiver or amplifier. A lot of people don't realize this, but they quit putting switched outlets on the back of receivers. I would imagine probably for insurance purposes, it seems to be the reason why they stopped doing everything that's good. Or maybe there's some audio files out there that will say, well, you shouldn't plug in anything else into there. It's going to degrade the sound. Okay, whatever. I would imagine it's because something got fried that was plugged into the back of a receiver and all of a sudden the insurance companies said you can't put outlets in the back of your amplifiers anymore. I could be totally wrong. Maybe it is an audio file thing. I've never heard my system sound different depending on whether or not I had something plugged into the outlets on the back of a receiver. So anyway, there's a lot of really cool things you can plug into the back of these, especially the switched ones, a DC fan. If you are using your receiver or amplifier and there's not a lot of air movement around it, grab a cheap, quiet DC fan off of Amazon, eBay, wherever, and uh, plug that in back there. When you turn on your stereo, it's gonna turn the little fan on. When you shut it off, it's gonna shut it off and get some movement blowing around back there. That's a great one to plug in. The other thing would be, you could do some mood lighting, uh, maybe throw a strip of LEDs back there, or even you know, a queuing lamp that you could just have a, a small gooseneck so you can see where you're placing the tone arm if, if you don't have enough light there. So, so use that switched outlet, whether it be for a fan keep your equipment cool. Or like I say, maybe, um, you know, a small gooseneck lamp and for cueing your turntable, or maybe just a cool LED strip for mood lighting. Cool thing to add to your vintage amplifier and receiver. And that's our number five spot. That is the switched outlet on the back of a receiver. And coming in at number four, we've got something more like the title says, which is an accessory to add to your vintage amplifier receiver. And our number four pick would be the subwoofer. A lot of people haven't gone into the world of subwoofers yet, kind of old school, you know, vintage. There wasn't subwoofers back then. That's why there's no subwoofer outputs in there. We did do a video not too long ago on how to hook up any subwoofer to almost any vintage receiver. And we will definitely put a link down below to that video. If you haven't tried a subwoofer, you can pick up a subwoofer for, you know, under a couple hundred bucks, 150 bucks. They really, really help the amplifier perform better in that you're taking the low frequencies, which the amplifier needs a lot of power to push, and you're delegating them to a subwoofer, which leaves your amplifier to handle the higher frequencies and the mid frequencies, which they can do a lot better, being some of these are only 15, 20 watts per channel. And um, you're really getting some good low end. You might have been missing uh, all this time. So in my opinion, for um, you know under a couple hundred bucks, adding a subwoofer to your vintage stereo is, uh, I, I would highly recommend it. I really don't see a lot of people being disappointed with what they hear. So anyway, that's our number four spot, and that is adding a subwoofer to your vintage stereo. All right, coming to number three, and possibly one of the better items on the list, we've got an inexpensive DAC with a remote control. And why do we need this? Well. If you're wanting to get the audio out of your television set, and like most new TVs, they just have a digital output, you can go out of your optical digital output of your TV into this little DAC and then go analog out of that 
into an input on your vintage stereo, whether it's auxiliary or tape, and then control the volume with the volume control that comes with the DAC. So um, it really solves a lot of problems, and these are under 30 bucks. They might not win an award for greatest sound quality, but we're just talking about TV audio, and in my opinion, for under 30 bucks for just watching YouTube or you know a movie here and there, it's just fine. So that's why our number three spot is the little DAC with volume control. Grab one of these, a lot of fun. And coming in at number two, almost in the same vein as the last one, this one, however, is just a line level volume control. It took me a long time to find these. They're available online on a site called Newark. You do not need a dealership to order from them, but I can't find them anywhere else. So anyway, go to newark.com, grab one of these. What this does is it adds a volume control to any line level device. So there's a few ways of doing this, depending on whether or not you have preamp outs and main ins on your stereo, or you just want to control the volume of one source. Or if you have a vintage stereo that has preamp out and main ins, you would put this box in line with those outs and ins, just like you would an equalizer back in the day. Same thing. So then every source you select or listen to would be going through the volume control. Uh, once again, I think these are under 60 bucks. I think they're inexpensive. They're well made. It's a metal chassis. Uh, I've had mine for, I don't know, four or five years. It works great. So if you've always wanted to add a volume control to your vintage stereo, this is how I would do it. And that is the number two spot. That is the inline line level volume control. And coming in at the number one spot, and I had these separated at one point, but I went ahead and put them together because they're getting so close in price now. And that is a Bluetooth adapter or a network streamer. And at this point, the network streamers are really... They're getting so inexpensive that I don't see the point of buying Bluetooth adapters much more. Now, I haven't tried one of these, but the Weem, uh, W-I-I-M, which uh, our good friend Randy at Cheap Audio Man says are great. I take his word for it. If you're looking for an inexpensive network streamer. So the ability to listen to high-res music or streaming services via your vintage receiver, the Weem will do that for you. I've been using Sonos for uh, five, six years. They're definitely more on the expensive side. They are kind of the pioneers of network receivers. And, uh, you know, it's kind of an ironclad system, but Weems weren't available when I bought my Sonos system. And if I were to redo it, I would definitely be looking at Weems because I imagine the technology has just gotten cheaper and now you're able to get those same features that would have cost you four or $500 a unit in a sub hundred dollar piece of equipment. So th the nice thing about Bluetooth is you can still pick up a decent Bluetooth adapter for under 50 bucks. And I don't recommend spending more than 50 bucks on a Bluetooth adapter. We've been in several of them and they seem to be the same chipset with rebranded by a different manufacturer. Bluetooth has so many limitations and if, if you just need a cheap way to get the, the music off your phone, into your vintage receiver and you don't really care about the fidelity because it's gonna compress it, grab a cheap Bluetooth adapter. Just don't buy an expensive one. Anything over 50 bucks, go get a network streamer because that is completely different. Much better quality, much better control of it. Um, but once again, that's another video. So bring your vintage receiver into the modern world, you get access to all kinds of music. You're not just relying on your music that's on CDs or LPs. You literally have access to every piece of recorded music in the world, it seems like at this point, and it's all controllable with your phone. And it seems like now the audio quality is getting to be so good that in my opinion, I'm happy with streaming. I don't need a CD player anymore. I still like my vinyl records. I will always have vinyl records and I'll always have streaming. It's just the best of both worlds. So if you've had your feet dug in the sand and you know, you're, that digital, you know, blah, blah, blah is horrible. I only want analog, you know, for 80 bucks or 90 bucks, you can grab a Weem, see what all the streaming's about. 
definitely worth it. I think you'll be a convert. The audio has gotten so much better than the old days of Napster and crappy MP3 downloads. Give it a try, try out a ween. Go check out Randy's video. We'll have a link for that in the description too if you wanna check out the Wee Mini. And once again, we'll have affiliate links down in the description, but shop local if you can. Those We don't make hardly anything off those affiliate links. I don't even know why we're bothering with them and we probably won't much longer. So that's the video. I know it's short, I know it's quick. We got a lot going, we really do. So hang in there, click the subscribe button if you haven't yet. We got a lot of stuff coming out. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll see you.